Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Okay, here we are again for another thrilling week of Curry Cafe. And as always, I have searched the entire community to find the brightest and most articulate minds in the area to discuss the subject. Today, we're going to be discussing recycling and waste and what to do about waste and how to not make waste and whether or not you even care that there's waste. So we will start out by going around the table and... To my left, we have... Shirley Hyatt. And to my left... Rick McNamer. And to mine... Jim Newman. You didn't say you, you were to his right. But is that because <laughs> <laughs> anybody that knows you says that's obvious? <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so anyway, um, I did a little research on this. I'm glad. And, uh, I'm glad the, uh, I think the only thing left... For me to say after uh, doing the research is if you're recycling, you're wasting your time. Not really. No, certain things, uh, things like plastic, it's awful what small percentage of plastic actually gets recycled into something else. And I did watch a video on, on YouTube this morning that you can take like your plastic bottle caps and things like that and put them in the oven. I didn't, it didn't write down the temperature for, I don't didn't write down the time either. Well, and they can be they can be melted into a goo that you can then put into a mold and make a make a, a knife for your or, or handle for your knife. So there's a there's a wonderful recycling tip for anybody that turn wants to handle shit. for their knife. Or I guess you could make well, a handle. That's I'd going to the nth degree. That that's good. Made something like a, a stepping stone for outdoors or something. But you know, I whatever. suppose you could do that. Yeah. It well, didn't I, say what you do with the oven after you've melted uh, plastic I, in that. Uh, I, uh, I would discard that whole idea. I don't... You didn't think that was I don't good, dig no. that. You know, I took um, a bunch of plastic bottles up to our local recycling place, which has some new rules, and there was a, there was a woman there, and she said to me, what, what are you bringing? What are you bringing? And, and I said, well, I've just got a bag of plastic bottles. And she said, okay, put them in there, but don't put the plastic bag in. So I thought, wow, somehow we're separating out plastic bottles from plastic bags. And from, and I thought, that, that's really a good thing. And I hope that people will realize that every tiny little bit helps, even though we're looking at masses and masses and masses of stuff. you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, right? I believe so. Yeah, you're right. And somebody paying attention to at least some small thing is probably better than nothing. But it is does appear to be pretty hopeless, unless we really come up with some. There's no money in it, for one thing. Not only a small percentage of plastics can be recycled, and then there's only a use for recycling a, a small amount. Um, and then they have the problem with micro uh, microchips, microplastics that, uh, that are killing well, seed Evidently, turtles we've got a lot of those in our bodies, as, even as we yes, speak. Yes, yes. Yeah. Somewhere I heard that we hey, we uh, we actually ingest two credit cards a week. One ten, no, one credit card. One credit week. card a week. Oh well, that's better. <laughs> well, is it a I visa? Could, yeah, if I could ingest one of the credit cards a week out of my wallet, I'd probably be in a better financial condition. Okay, well, I'm going to jump in since yeah, um, please. I have probably the most recent experience with uh, mass recycling in the area here, and I I'm the coordinator for the Cans for Kids recycling program. Uh, that the uh, Lions do. Okay, it's a fundraiser. So it has good uh, outcomes for us in the sense that we raise money to provide uh, all the eyeglass, uh, eyeglasses for kids in school, the exams, hearing aids, and even going into uh, lower income individuals. Okay, so that's the plus side. Okay, the plus side. Um, in our area outweighs the negatives, but I do agree. So many of the recycled plastics don't find a useful purpose now, but I, I'm always reading about new uh, technologies that are using plastics. I remember when uh, Trex decking came out, and that is a plastic byproduct that's turned into, you know, 
faux wood, basically, for decks. It's, and they even have some now that's designed to be structural so that you can put load-bearing uh, weight on it. Mm. But until that came up, we were recycling even less and less plastic. Okay, now, you're, you're prompting me to bring up something that I'm curious about. Mm? Does plastic continue to break down and slough off all the time, no matter what? I mean, it is what we're picking up in the air, are there little particles, tiny little mini particles, mini... <laughs> Mini what am I trying to say? Oh my my, Come on. It's itsy bitsy little things that are sloughed off from the plastic. It's much like what happens in your washing machine with your clothes. That agitation will break down the fibers. The fibers will uh, go into the uh, wastewater and stuff like that. Well, how the microplastics get formed in the large part is they're in the ocean. Okay or they're in some environment where they're constantly being jostled, and that jostling j breaks up the plastic uh, and then gets put into the air, into the, uh, the waters. Uh, they're finding um, microplastics in people's brains now. Isn't that exciting? Brains. Mm -hmm. Because once it gets in your body, it can, it's so small, it can travel just about anywhere. I read a I read a problem uh, a problem an idea not too long ago uh, of uh, taking this plastic grinding it up mm -hmm. and then just mixing it into asphalt being used for the roads yes. and supposedly the problem with that was that would be creating microplastics so is that from you seem to be familiar with the so is that from, from the yeah. road well yeah anytime you have a repetitive action that involves some kind of friction whether it's tires on a road. Plus, we're getting the rubber from the tires in the environment as well. <laughs> Your tires wear out, right? Well, where does all that rubber go? In the environment. You're probably breathing it in, especially if you're in a big city. So, um, yeah, there, I don't think there's any really totally safe places to uh, put recycled plastic. That's not going to have some kind of an impact. I'm always, you know, referring to the for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction kind of thing. Um, but if we don't make any attempt at uh, taking these things out of the environment, we're going to end up with many, 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 many more uh, plastic islands in the ocean. And uh, even that technology is uh, getting uh, more traction and new ideas for how to go and collect those plastics and get them out of the ocean. Yeah, but the, the ones that I've seen, they have a like a sieve that goes across the surface and picks up these islands of, of plastic mm -hmm. we don't know about, but a lot of it has already gone down or it's in the belly of a turtle or something. Uh, yes, that's, you know, unfortunate. Uh, we, we see the uh, turtles that get, um, you know, snagged in uh, nets, which are almost all made out of uh, nylon rope these days. See, that was a nice thing when they had hemp rope. It would eventually break down, you know, and uh, disintegrate, but not, uh, not the nylon ropes. I, I was in Australia a number of years ago, and we went to uh, the docks where they were bringing in a fishing contest. And in Australia, they do things kind of unusual. You don't have to bring the fish in. You just say, "Yeah, I caught the seven hundred pound shark." <laughs> but the ones that they do that they do bring in are ones that, for whatever reason, another one they got in the boat, they weren't going to survive. And several of them were a uh, shark or whatever fish had swam swam into. Those uh, little plastic things we used to get. Uh, oh, the six pack holders. Six pack yep. holders, yeah. And that didn't grow, but the shark did. And they had this little six inch thing around mm, the neck. Sad. Yeah. We don't, it, I think we're fighting, yeah, we're also fighting, I think, an uphill battle with the plastic industry, if you will. You talk about those little six pack holders. I used to be a, a big beer drinker, so I would be cognizant and I would cut them in mm. half. You know, like we were supposed yes, yeah. to throw them away. Well, and then over the years, I don't know if you've noticed this, if they're still there. I don't drink the beer anymore that I used to, but they even made smaller little holes. So it was harder to even cut the plastic up to dispose of it to be, to make it safer, if you will. Do they still and, use those? What's that? Are those? I, you know, I don't know because I don't really buy beer or soda that much anymore. But but anything, the 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 packaging that they have when i get clothes oh yeah mm -hmm. I, I, the ones that really well they all bother me but there's i looked them up there are those little uh oh they're like a little plastic attachment with a t on the each end 
They put them everywhere in a pair of socks. You might have two or three of them. And yeah. you try to pull them out, you cut them, and then the little thing falls or slips <laughs> away. You can't. Tear, tear holes in your well, new but, socks. I mean, or you don't just... get all the pieces no, right. until you put the shoes on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Then you'll end up eating it out somewhere. Maybe. <laughs> but it's just crazy the amount of packaging, the overpacking. Yeah. And yes, I'm guilty. I order stuff on Amazon a lot of times. Yeah. I can't. I try to get locally, but if you can't, and the uh, God, you'll get a box the size of uh, the, a TV would be in, maybe, and then all the bubble wrap and the plastic, and it's uh, the size of a toothpaste. Uh, <laughs> and tooth and the interesting thing is, by the time you get through all the Amazon packing, you get a box from the company that looked perfectly fine to me for shipping. I don't yeah. know why they couldn't just ship it in that box. Well, right, exactly. Yeah. Well, because they want to make sure that it doesn't have to get returned again or doesn't break so somebody can sue them or whatever. Jim, I wanted to go back. You were uh, talking about rubber, and I think um, you were talking about roadways. Aren't they recycling rubber tires, so-called rubber tires? Are, are tires made out of rubber? I mm -hmm. mean, is yeah. that... Yeah, and, but, and there are um, some companies that are uh, doing that... Uh, more so, uh, I think, in other countries than ours, for some reason. Probably somebody's paying somebody off somewhere. That's my jaundiced opinion of how things work. Um, but yeah, they, they do use the rubber uh, as an additive to, to the asphalt. And um, the reports I've read said that uh, the roads last anywhere from 10 to 25% longer with the rubber in it. And does rubbers slough off in the same way that plastic does with an ill effect to the atmosphere? Yeah, it all does. It, Everything it all does. does. Yeah, it's just like paint on the side of your house, okay? Yeah. It will slough off because, you know, when the, the, yeah. the raindrops hit the paint, that's a force, an action, a resistance, and there you go. So, so you said paint. Now, is acrylic paint, that's plastic, right? Well, it's a form of plastic, yeah. yeah. It's not nearly as... Um, uh, deleterious to uh, the environment in the sense that uh, I don't, I have never read about any major buildups you know, like in the water treatment plants or anything like that. So it's a very, very minute quantity as compared to uh, things like, well, let's let's pick on prescription drugs that get uh, thrown, you know, into your garbage can that uh, go through the. Um, uh, recycling centers or the the waste centers and stuff like that. Eventually, all that stuff wears down and leaches into the soil to be returned to the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, huge problems at most of the uh, water treatment plants. And pharmaceuticals are made out of plastics, petroleum-based products, okay? Uh, they're just not hard like we're kind of used to, like in a, a bottle kind of thing. But uh, that's even becoming an issue. Uh, yeah, with that. Yeah, we're, 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 we're looking we're at plastic right now. We're sitting behind plastic yeah. screens right here, right. for those of you who can't see us. Um, <laughs> the only ones that can see us is us. We already knew it, Charlie, so <laughs> you didn't have to mention it. <laughs> Except no, the people but who... I'm looking around at, okay. at everything that's plastic. You know, plastic in the carpeting, plastic in all of the stuff that we're looking well, at. Plastic is an incredible material, it, unbelievably wonderful I mean, they make material. clothes out of it. Everything is in mm -hmm. I, it's. You don't it's want like, a, sh a, a shampoo bottle made out of glass. That's 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 well, the one plastic thing I'll give you. I don't want anything you're going to take in, well, in your shower. Well, that I mean, gonna... yeah, I guess there, there were and still are maybe some good things about it, but boy, the way we've... I even... Uh, I, well, another one of my pet peeves, I didn't think it had to do with plastics, but I found out it does. All the little stickers that they put on every stupid piece of produce that you yeah. can get in a store, I think that's useless. I, but what do you they do with them? also you know, made out of I sit, plastic in that. I sit down at the couch with an orange, and I first thing I do is take those stupid things off. <laughs> Peel the orange. Now, what do I do with this damn sticker? <laughs> put it on your forehead. I've put got it, a sticker. You know, I can. Put it on I your cheat a lot, and I just crinkle it up as small as I can get it. <laughs> drop it on the floor. Well, I have a, ma a major question, and that is, what did happen to the glass industry? I mean, I'm going to be very naive here and say, isn't glass made from sand, basically, as its yes prim primary mm -hmm. ingredient? So, um. Why has why has glass gone out of style? Be because it breaks and plastic doesn't. Is that as simple as that? 
I think that there is a huge lobby for the plastics uh, industry that started probably in the late 40s, early 50s. About the time The Graduate came out, wasn't it? It could be, could be, you know. <laughs> Infamous scene. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I uh, also remember working in a hospital uh, in the 1970s when they went through the transition from glass IV bottles to plastic IV bottles, the pliable, mm -hmm. you know, ones. And... Um, that was a step forward, in my opinion, because I, I first got my, my start in uh, as a stockroom clerk. And if you've ever dropped a bottle or a case of, of glass bottles and it's dripping all over the floor, it's not fun. Plastic, you can drop all day long and it just kind of bounces around. And Convenience. And I, and I was going to high, is a big reason. I was going to high school. I worked uh, after school in a supermarket and a stock boy. And when the trucks would come in, we would, it was this thing of conveyors and went all over the basement where uh, things came. But if a, a case of bleach and a glass thing fell, you had bleach all over the damn place. And we actually one time uh, had a, a case of bleach and a case, case of ammonia drop and oh my got goodness. mixed together. So lethal. Long. Yeah, we didn't go back in the basement like for a while. Green gas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now this prompts me to ask, what are we going to do if we we're all talking about the negative aspect? Of, of using glass because it's breakable, but other, and it's heavier. Those are the two things that I think people would complain about. But what can we do, if anything, about this constant plastics popping up in our lives in various ways? Is, is there a glass industry, a glass lobby, or anybody saying, hey, let's, let's not do this anymore? I'm not drinking out of plastic bottles anymore. I, I stopped buying water that comes in a plastic bottle and I'm drinking our good old tap water here because it's pretty good. <laughs> so I don't know. Where can we go with this? Is there any, is, any way out? My guess is that the plastic is not any more convenient. It's probably cheaper to, to, to produce than, than glass. Do you know, Jim? That I do not know, but um, they, at one time, the ubiquitous they, uh, were talking about shuttering the I think the only glass recycling plant in Oregon, and it wasn't because they had, there was an issue with glass. It was an issue with the fact that the furnaces that were used to melt the glass were fired by liquid mm -hmm. petroleum gas. So you're using a you know, gasoline, yeah, you know, circle. yeah, it's, it's very weird. But see, that would have been uh, disastrous for most of these recycling operations uh, of separating out uh, the glass from the plastic. And then what do you do with the glass if they're not taking it to recycle it? Then it eventually ends up in your uh, dumps. But glass is recyclable, mm -hmm. unlike plastic. I mean, it can be ground up, it can be melted, it can do all kinds of They could put that in the highways without any problem. And there are people that... Uh, that make like countertops and things like that from from ground up glass, and it has all these unique colors in it, or mm -hmm. it could be a solid color. Make more dishes Gla out of broken yeah. dishes. Yeah. Yeah. Gl yeah, glass is a environmentally, I guess, a, a better way to go. Except, <laughs> here we uh, go. <laughs> we uh, glass is made from sand, and we're actually world is actually running out of sand because they have so many things that are being made from silica. Uh, to include uh, solar panels, but oh, I solar up. panels are getting away from that. They're going to be. They're... I give up. There's nowhere to go. Well, there well, isn't. I... Fortunately, uh, most of us at the table here are not going to see the worst of it. Maybe not. Well, and then we can, if everybody recycled, I think that would solve some of the problems. But again, and we've talked about uh, the re even if you do recycle a lot of the plastics, uh, what did I read? I, they said maybe 19%, 20% are actually recycled. Mm -hmm. And then the other stuff ends up, I guess, in that garbage patch in the ocean. That's I thought that might even have been an old wives' tale or thing, but no, it's a real deal. Some, and some, it's huge. For and some it, reason, some of the Asian countries are taking them, a, a, a plastic, even though they have no use for it. Right. Uh, some of those, somebody making money here, and they're just taking it out literally in the woods and dumping it. Right. Or, Dump it, dumping it in the ocean. These places like Bali where, you know, it was famous for incredibly beautiful oceans and and it's now got 
Coke bottles. So yeah, floating and around. And I tell you, in the last, uh, we're a wasteful throwaway society in a lot of yeah. ways. I think, and the United States is down the list of countries that like try to improve or care. But in the last three weeks, I've just had three incidences. I, I live right across from Pelican Beach, just over the border. Twice, there have been people there that just dump truckloads of trash. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's bad enough if you're going to do it in, in, in this, but it, you sit there and you look at the ocean and then it, it was horrible. Yeah. Now, I, we did pick up one with the big lawn leaf bags. Uh, the other one eventually got picked up. Oh, and then also there was somebody else decided to dump a roll of carpet in the in the same area. Mm. Uh, it's it's just hard to keep up with that. Um, a lot of people just don't care. I, I wish no, I had the statistics don't. of the people that I kind of broke it up into three categories as far as recycling or people that that care. And then people that are just kind of ignorant that just mindlessly might throw their trash. We see it all the time in a drive through Somebody's flipping out, you know. Or people like that that dump their whole uh, loads of trash mm -hmm. at that, public place. That roll of carpet is a problem because what do you do with it? Uh, well, I took When it. I first moved here, I had some stuff to throw away. And I was shocked. I went to the to the dump here. I don't remember what it cost, but it was a lot. Mm -hmm. And in Tucson, I would take a whole trailer load, cost twenty dollars. And here, it, it was like one big item. I don't remember what it was. And that cost twenty dollars. And then you have to drive way the hell down the road, and um, it's a lot easier and cheaper to take that carpet and dump it in the woods. Well, yeah, I'm surprised yeah, we don't have a lot more than we do. What's that? I'm surprised we don't have a lot more than we do. We really don't have a lot. Well, well I use the landfill down, or the waste management down in Crescent City. Uh, we don't use the uh, trash cans for various reasons, but boy, that place, I don't know if you've ever been down there, but that's really a pretty good place. They took the carpet for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and the load of stuff I had was, I think, a one load of trash in my pickup is uh, nine bucks or something. Well, I have to say at this point in time that we do have some things going that are on the positive side. And and we have a lot of people who are recycling their things by taking them to the thrift store, you know, mm -hmm. giving them, giving them to somebody else. And I think more and more in a town like this, I mean, what do we have? We don't have big department stores, but we have a couple of really good thrift stores. And the animal shelter is, to me, is the best one. And mm -hmm. It's amazing what people, when they think about it, instead of hauling it to the to the dump, uh, they take it to the thrift store, and one of the guys happens to be my music partner. You know, he's a he's one of those people who can say, "Hey, I can fix that up," and then it'll, you know, be really worth selling and helping out the animal shelter, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, I think more and more there are fewer places to buy new clothes. And more opportunity to buy clothes that people don't want anymore, they don't fit, or for whatever reason, and they end up in thrift stores, and then it's kind of a win-win situation. But we're we're still very wasteful. I, I for one, just really hate the whole idea of the Walmart. You know, the whole thing. You just just make as many things for as cheaply as you possibly can, and get them out there and, and people go, oh, it's only $2. Months. I guess I'll oh, buy it. You know, it's only $2. Oh. And then you end up with all this stuff that people don't need or want. I mean, how much stuff do you really need around you? Does, does the thrift store repair broken items? Uh, if if they're worthwhile, yeah. Don't well, uh, don't don't quote me. I'll have okay. I'll get into all kinds of trouble here. <laughs> my, my microwave went out six or eight months ago. Took it took it to the local uh, appliance repair place, and they said, oh, you can't get parts and blah. Anyway, you it didn't look like I could yourself, get it fixed, so I took it home and went to YouTube, the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> YouTube had my exact model, the exact problem that was wrong with my with my microwave, ex item number and everything. Went on Amazon and fixed it for 80 bucks. Unfortunately, that fix only lasted about four or five months, and <laughs> <laughs> and 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 when when I bought those things for eighty bucks, I thought I was really getting a big deal because I thought microwaves were like a couple of hundred dollars, but, but 
I wound up replacing it for ninety five. But now you're talking about getting back to why we have so much stuff in the in the trash. Things are not built to last. No. I mean, we used to have. I remember many many years. We always had a fix it guy. I mean, you, the toaster broke or whatever. Something went wrong with a small appliance. Things aren't worth the guy fixing would fix anymore. You can, you they can, don't want you to you, fix things. They you could, they want you to buy something new, and that's well, one of the issues. And I've heard it called. Uh, Planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence. Yeah, planned that, obsolescence. Everybody's heard that. Exactly. That yeah. used to be the case with American cars. Well, Years ago, you bought a car, yeah. probably all of us remember, and, and, you, and you got a payment book with 36 slips in it or 24 slips, whatever. whatever. Mm-hmm. Each month, you tore one off, and you, and you go, oh, boy, I've almost got this paid off, four more payments. But about the time you got to the four more payments thing, the generator goes out, and then the next day, a wheel bearing goes out. They were made to wear out. Last about as long as the payment book before it started costing. I, I, in those days, I called new cars ephemeral. <laughs> but now they they have to be better because the yeah. Japanese came in. What were you said, saying, Rick? Uh, no, I was done. Go ahead. Oh no, no. I, <laughs> oh, I well, a, a thought did pop into my brain. I had to go back to the tires we were talking about. I I worked down. I worked for the railroad, and I worked for a contractor afterwards. And I was down in the Bay Area, San Jose area. They were putting in a new passenger line mm-hmm. down there. The base for all the new rails that they were, the rails and the crossings, the base was made out of all ripped up tires. Mm-hmm. I mean, truckloads upon truckloads upon truckloads were coming through there. That was the base. It was supposed to cushion the ride right. for, for passenger trains, lighter, not mm-hmm. freight. Right. But I thought that was pretty amazing. I thought, wow, well, there's an idea. Somebody had a good idea to recycle old tires. Now again, how long is that? Does that go down into the environment in another century or two? I don't know, but that was I thought a good use for that. Yeah. Somebody thought of something to, because how many times have we heard of the big tile uh, tire piles burning up and mm-hmm. all those noxious the, gases in the years. air? <laughs> the other good reason to get rid of old tires is they collect water, and water attracts mosquitoes. Oh, yeah. And we have all kind. We have. Exotic mosquitoes coming across the ocean and tires, and the in the what? pools. Yeah, that. Oh my word! <laughs> so they're opportunistic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the other good thing with old tires is if you are prone to getting out and gardening, they make wonderful round planters, especially <laughs> if you're going to be doing something like potatoes. Yeah. Because you can plant those deep down in. You know, and you can make them as tall or as uh, short as you want. You to. can turn them into a swing. Well, that tire swings too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As long as you drill holes in the bottom, so the the water does not collect. So I've got a few on my property, and I have to, you know, uh, upend them from time to time to get rid of, get rid of the water in them. So, um, yeah. But all these ideas for using stuff, they usually take years and years in product development or technique development to make sure that, hey, we're going to put this roadbed down, and then a year into the program, they have a catastrophic failure, and uh, a train full of passengers goes off and kills three well, people. You know, Chances you take, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, right. I, I don't know what the, the overall answer is. No, I don't either. What I really am enjoying is there are some really um, neat ideas coming up about um, creating um, biodegradable products like trays that hold meat and actual bottles. You don't, you can't see in them, but you can't see in an aluminum can either. So, uh, and then once these go, get into the um, uh, dump, uh, they break down, you know, fairly quickly, you know, within 10, 15 years. It's not instantaneous by any means, or else you wouldn't be able to put anything in them and have them stay. So, but uh, that's that's coming along. So, well, you know, uh, some friends of mine years ago were involved with some people who were using styrofoam, mm-hmm. which is a plastic product, right? Uh, anyway, sty- styrofoam weighs practically nothing. You know, it's it's very light. And you can carve it into shapes. Mm. And they were making houses mm. out of it. And I thought, you know, this this is a you don't just have the styrofoam, obviously, as the end product of the of the building. But then it was um rebar, stack it up with rebar mm. and hold it together 
and I think cement. Right. And you, then you pour the holding cement it all in the openings because it's, exactly. it's, it's like there a channel go. that's created in between two pieces of styrofoam with some porting yeah. uh, plastic things. And then you fill that up with right good insulation factor. Excellent. Well, insulation. I was going to say, and there you go. You've got you've got this process where you're not using wood. Well, of course, the wood industry wants you to use the wood, oh, but yeah. <laughs> but um, but it didn't um, it didn't do well for some reason. I don't know whether the other industries say no. We don't want you butting in on our territory. But there's so many good ideas out there that, for one reason or another, don't get employed, and they don't have enough backing or Whatever, but but we're sort of dedicated to doing the things the way we always did them. Right, and we're so, resistant to change. So what? Yeah, what can we do to shake people up to the point where they're? Back, oh, I'll okay. go back to the uh, when the plastic bags. Now, I I think we've all seen in neighborhoods I came from, we could see plastic bags bags floating all around. Mm-hmm. But God, it was probably twenty five or thirty years ago that they were starting to. Uh, have you try to use reusable bags? Mm-hmm. Now I've used them forever, mm-hmm. forever, but a lot of people were very resistant and uh, to do that, especially agree or disagree when they started charging for the bag. Mm-hmm. Boy, I've seen some scenes <laughs> in supermarkets, man, where wow, it was ugly. That's <laughs> that's know. a standard in Europe. You go, you get in line in a in a store, and in countries I've been in Europe, there's the bags right there, but then they're, they're not free. You pay not well, not a lot for them, but you pay for them. again. Yeah, well, I, it just it drives me nuts when I get in line and there's somebody in front of me putting all their groceries in a paper bag. And it was even worse when they were plastic bags. But why? You know, almost every charity organization in town will give you a, 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 right. a grocery bag if you give right. them five bucks or something. It's and remembering to bring them with you shopping. I've I have more than once had the cart almost completely full, and I realized, oh damn it, I left the bags in the car, and I go out in the rain, and <laughs> I'm such a hero. I, mean, I leave mine. I should get. I leave mine at the I house. I should get something for that. Back. Well, and uh, <laughs> yes, I've forgotten them. No, I've forgotten them too, and I use the plastic. You know, I I'm not my the, own the, bags every time. Well, I me go too. Shopping. And yeah. Freddy's, I think, are the best. The best bags, the way the ones they have that fold out and they put. Oh yeah, the bottom there. I, they just yeah. great. But yeah. Um, I, I again, I've forgotten them, and I'm not a hero like Ray to run out in the rain and get it. So, <laughs> but I do recycle the plastic bags. Really, if they even get recycled, I don't know. Back to the how many percent? What's the you know, percentage? Fred that, Fred Meyer has a, the uh, the cans there where you can put the what they call film plastic. Mm-hmm. So bread wrappers oh, and oh, right, and the plastic right. bags can go in there. Well, right. I, I don't know what happens after yeah. that. But but I just never it. understood the anger or or the uh, that resistant to change what seems positive, you know, a positive thing that we can all do to help reduce this. Then you, well, if and people you're don't, being woke. Yeah, if they don't see the value problem. in it for themselves, then it's not important. You know, we're very well, yeah. selfish as a... Well, yeah, uh, selfish, throw away, it, it's too easy. Where, where, where I live, there is uh, about a dozen of us that have a garbage camp pickup point down at the end of my road. And on garbage day, this. A, a line of uh, of cans, and every now and then a bear decides he wants to come by and check out the bill of mare. Knocks them all over, drags them. Oh, I'm, why don't I just knock them over and take some? Though they have to drag it fifty yards. <laughs> but anyway, I'm shocked. This is the only time I get to look at my neighbor's garbage. How many <laughs> aluminum cans are in there, and how many bottles are in there, and how many easily, easily, and well. But things like aluminum cans can be recycled very well, and they can mm-hmm. even get money for it. That people just don't care; they're just throwing it in the they garbage, don't. and that's it. I don't, I don't get it. It feels all. like too much work. If it's not easy, they won't do it. I, you know, I, I, I was down, happened to be down at this can thing one time, and we used to have a recycling things a little bit away, and I um, uh, left to. Uh, after I put my garbage in, I, I started to drive away, and, and my neighbor said something to me. I said, oh, I'm going to the recycling thing. And he kind of gave me a, a look like, huh? You know, He gave me the same look when I bought an electric car. Well, we know what that's about, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, a couple other of my pet peeves are the way we package and manufacture stuff. How about these flossers that they make? The what? The flossers for your teeth. 
Oh. I see those in parking lots. They're scattered everywhere. I right. see them on the beach. Uh, I, I guess they're handy. I, I prefer the old-fashioned way with just a regular dental floss. But they're just horrible. They're just throw it. They're made to throw on the ground, Yeah, I think. And I, I see them all over the place. Um, these balloon releases that they have. Oh, yeah. That's another thing that really bugs me. Yeah. It, it's portrayed as just a wonderful thing, and all I can yeah. see is just litter and crap floating back. I, I, I just don't get that. And what about sending off bags that are on fire, sending those up in the... Well, the, it, you know, I'm any, like, yes, how any and all that. can you possibly be, you know? Well, don't tell that to the Japanese people. Yeah. Oh, it's a big part of their culture. <laughs> well, for centuries. Still, Sorry. You know, well, don't, don't get me started on the fireworks show because I think that's one of the oh, worst things that we do. And that, that makes me sound unpatriotic, but I can't see what's patriotic about it because it's well, dirty, it's, 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 it's ugly, it's it has smoky. Morphed, it's, it has morphed into this illegal bomb explosion. Yeah. I, I, oh, well, it's legal here. But. A few years ago on 4th of July, a friend of mine talked me into going down to the beach with her and building a little fire and watching the fireworks. So we went down there, and I don't remember if we had a fire or not. We probably did, Green Conformist. But about every 50 feet or so on the beach, there's somebody that has a little fire being built. And the the, the air was just awful. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely awful. And yeah. people are running around and then doing whatever they do, and music they is playing. That, they think it's fine somehow. And the fireworks were supposed to start at 10 or something, and they started like hours and hours late. And meanwhile, we're down. Oh, oh, and the other thing we're breathing is everybody has their own fireworks that, I don't know, boy, I wish I could afford to buy fireworks. <laughs> uh, people evidently spending hundreds of dollars. So you have this smoke, and then you have the gunpowder or whatever it is for the fireworks. And after not too long a period of time, I could barely breathe, and my friends say, isn't this great? Yeah, and I'm yeah, thinking, yeah, no. Wondered I remember experiences just like this when the firefight started in Vietnam. It was just like this until we got organized. It was just everything mismatch, and then finally the fireworks started. So she was sick after this incident for oh, about surprise, two weeks. Surprise! And I kept saying, "It's the damn fireworks you were breathing." Oh no, it's not that. I said, "I think it is." But yeah, that and. That's considered to be fun. And then I find out these, these fireworks cost thousands and thousands of dollars and and pollutes the water because whatever is right. coming down into the ocean. up, must come down. Well, yes. supposedly it, it's at least $20,000 to put on the fireworks show here in Burmese. Mm. So Maybe I, I we could probably take, take up a collection to just not do it. a pile of money out there and set it on fire? Yeah. I mean, it's... Well, because that won't attract the uh, tourists. Say it again. That won't attract the tourists. Do you think tourists come to the fireworks? It's show? one of the best fireworks shows um, in Southern Oregon. Oh, uh, you have a you have a bigger one in Medford, but um, yeah, it's 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 a go to. You got to remember the time of year too. People are sweltering in 110, 112 degree heat in the valley. They want to come over where it's cool. Well, yeah. why not come over where it's cool? And, you know, your kids can enjoy the, the, the boom parade. I don't enjoy it, but then we sound like a bunch well, of old you never know. people. And you don't have to worry about it. Boy, if you have horses, you sure don't like them. <laughs> well, even dogs. They used to drive We're dogs. Not, not oh, yeah. the big the ones, but just the little ones unhappy. going off. My horses would be running around. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I drove them crazy. Now, the good news is, with the advent of the drones, I've seen some Absolutely. incredible drone they, uh, displays. At least And it's good. getting nothing but better. Yes, that, and how much do they cost? Have we ever looked into that? I would imagine well, I mean, if you're going to buy a, a drone of that quality, you're, you're probably starting at three hundred up to a thousand dollars per drone. No, but you you have to hire somebody to do that. You, we can't to get put the, on the drone. You can't show. get the local yeah. guys at the VFW to do that. That well, no, no, it's that's a high drone, highly companies. technical thing. But a couple of years ago at the uh, at the Olympics, they had these drone shows mm -hmm. when it was in London. I think and unbelievable, amazing yeah. things they can do with those. You know, but are they recyclable? It's a drone. It's a little. <laughs> it's a drone. You plug oh. it in and it recycles itself. <laughs> you mentioned the tourists, and yeah, the, the, this area, which is beautiful and wonderful, it needs tourism, and of course, I agree with that. The kite yeah. festival, no what? pollution. Kite festival, oh, kite. no pollution. There you go. Mm -hmm. But Hundreds on my walks sure. around the beaches that I try to do every day with my dog, and it's wonderful. Uh, the trash. Back to the trash issue. Um. 
not the ones that I found that tons of the, the trash the other day, but on the beach, everybody seems to, again, we're a throwaway. I, plastic bottles and straws and all of that stuff. But when the tourism season starts, boy, that just exponentially blows up. Uh, what do you, what do we do? Well, what I do is I take, here we go, plastic bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of people do that. <laughs> yeah. You know? And pick up what you can. But, um, I, I just go back to the, the people just don't seem to care about that kind of thing. Where is, there's a town up the coast that, that has a little museum where they put together with beach uh, trash. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, animals and different things. It's in uh, Bandon. It's incredible. It's in Bandon. Bandon. Huh? Well, I, I met that artist and mm -hmm. she is in really fabulous at putting, taking all this stuff and making wonderful art out of it. She had her show at the Manly Art Center here. And she's the one that I was telling you about, Ray, because she, she said, now this is according to her, a lot of the plastics that she took washed up in Alaska because oh, really? of the way the tides mm. moved. Did she things. shipped it from Alaska down to here? Well, she gathered it for many years, and then she, oh. she's the one who lives in Bandon, but she had her art display at Manly here. And just incredibly beautiful things. But then you look at it and you go, oh my gosh, that's bug oh, yeah. caps. So that's, you know, whatever. But um, that's one thing to do with it is to turn it into art. But it's also for her, I think, a message to say, look, look at how much stuff is thrown away all the time. And look, look how much of it is just, it's just little bits of things, but put it all together and you can make some art. But why are we doing so much of it? What we're we've turned into a terrible throwaway. Society. Well, let's just let's just take the the meat counters at uh, any store that you've got. At one time, there were no plastic trays with plastic film over them, so you could see what you've got. You talked to the the meat cutter, the butcher, and said, "I want this cut of meat. I want them so thick." Blah 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 blah. He held it up. You looked at it. Looks great to me. He put it in a Paper wrapper. Right, right. Well, obviously, having that kind of labor cost was not going to go over well with the large corporations. So the push was to do that. Yes, they may get some more shelf life out of that, but if you're not cutting meat up ahead of time, it stays pretty contiguous and it's, it doesn't spoil as, as, as often as one would think. So that's just one little small example as to why the uh, in influx of uh, plastics. I was talking about, talking about the bears in my garbage before. When I get those trays with the uh, chicken or whatever, and, and then I take the chicken out, the garbage doesn't go out until Thursday. So I put those in the freezer. And on Thursday, I take them out of the freezer. Uh, I mean, they, the bear will still smell them, but mm -hmm. I, don't know, I think I'm doing we my, do the thing, my little right. bit, you know, to keep right. You could wrap it in plastic so the bear couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Some saran wrap. Oh, um, my gosh. <laughs> you know, back to the resistance to change things. Um, well, I don't know if this is the right way to talk about it. Well, I, I think about back in the day of the old uh, cans, the flip, uh, the pop tops. Mm -hmm. Remember those? Oh, Jimmy yeah. Buffett sang about them, cut his. Yeah or whatever on You weren't in well, college if you didn't have a screen. Well, right. right. And, and and how many of those did we find just, you know, all over the place? Uh, but I'm an old movie fan. And, <laughs> boy, watching old movies, you, you, sometimes you have to just, okay, you know there's going to be racism occasionally. and But, boy, did those people just chuck stuff all over the place. Cigarette butts. Oh, cigarettes. Whiskey mainly, bottles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything. Was, and, you know, like for effect, it almost made you think, oh, man, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but you know, uh, it, it. I think that influenced people. If you want to be really, really shocked, get. I'm sure you can find it someplace. Jacques Cousteau's movie. Oh, what was it called? The Silent Something. That which I can't think. Of. He he did a he did a, a full length movie about scuba diving and and. Uh, oh, God! It's a silent Something, but uh, Silent oh. World maybe. Okay. And in this, he well, they not only run into a whale with their boat because they're following it and too close, and then they capture a walrus or something and take it as the mascot. But they're going down, uh, going into caves and things like that with these flares, these underwater flares, and the flares burn out and they just drop them. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, a lot of stuff we just don't, I don't know, yeah. think about. Well, they don't think about it. That's that's it. You know, we're just unconscious going about our lives. But, you know, what what are you going to do, really? Well, you can we, only just do can't so give much. Up, for, I don't think. We no, if you run your head, yeah, yeah, then yeah. we can. If every one of us educated one other person, one teaches one, teaches one, teaches one, the importance of either putting your trash in a receptacle or recycling the stuff that can be recycled, it will make a big difference, I think. Or stop buying so much stuff that's, that has so much packaging. That's, well, that's, well, can we talk? I, I bought, well, I got something in the mail the other day, um, uh, some little thing anyway, and, and it must have taken me five minutes to open that damn package oh. to get oh, the damn no, thing I, out. And, and Slicing here and slicing there, cut my fingers. And, I know, I'm horrible. What? Can, can the, we talk about cars for a second here? Because you, you said something about people being mad at you for buying a, an electric car. I mean, is, why, why are people against the electric car? Do they feel that that's a slap against the gas industry somehow? Um, well, first of all. Because you can't run up and down the highway in a Julie pickup with no, no, flags no, no, flying, no. ribbing no. your end. Okay, Jim's got an opinion here. Let's hear it. <laughs> first of all. Uh, electro electric vehicles are not non-polluting. That's number one. They're not what? Non-polluting. Okay. You have tires. The tires wear out. Well, that's a pollutant right there. Okay. Well, that's got nothing to do with electric, whether it was a gas car. But it, or... it's still, you they know, a part, part they, and parcel of the equation. They okay. wear out on my Thunderbird, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but still, that's one aspect, Okay. 220,000 gallons of water required to um, basically refine the lithium required for the batteries. Yeah, it's the battery issue, isn't it? Well, really? that pre predominantly, yes. But then, what do you do with a lithium battery that catches on fire? I don't know. I never had one. Yeah. <laughs> if it's in your garage, you're pretty screwed because you can't put it out with water. Mm. It has to be pulled out of the garage, encased in this uh, bag that reduces the oxygen flow, and then carted off on a flatbed truck to a uh, a site like uh, a wrecking yard, far away from everything else, because it could light on fire instantaneously. Well, well, I How don't often know. are these fires? Yeah, what uh, I read percentage? about them every day. You read about them every day? Yeah. What's the percentage, do you think, in this country of people who have opted? For an electric vehicle, are uh, we six percent minuscule or is six percent? It's, it's very small so far. Yeah. Yeah. So, is it but because yet, the industry isn't mature enough for people to feel that it's safe? Like you're bringing up the idea mm -hmm. of the lithium battery blowing up. See, I I don't pay much attention to this kind of thing, but I but I do think that it's part of the equation to say, is it good for us as a as creatures who live on the earth? Is it good for us to try to do away with the fumes from, from a gas vehicle? I mean, diesel. There, there are some benefits I mean, there. I'd rather see them uh, devote a lot more time to, um, uh, what's the other one? There you... Capturing emissions? Well, no. no um, there's, a, there's other forms of uh, power, re um, renewable energy that can. Yeah. What's, electri what's electric? I've said this before, probably at this microphone, but electric cars are, as far as I'm concerned, they're in the Model T stage. Yes. Right. Uh, I have a 2016 electric car that I think its reported range is something like 70. Mm -hmm. There's no way you could sell a car today with a reported range of 70. Right. They're all well into the hundreds. So it kind of takes away a lot of the inconvenience part. Uh, you know, if you could, you could go to Medford with a car that gets 200, let's say, you get to Medford, put it in one of those fast charge things for 45 minutes, a half hour, and I seeing some that are actually even faster than that, and you're ready to go home. My car, I would have to stop three or four times along the way to get to Medford, and there ain't three or four places to no, do that. No. But you know what, but what now, we do. But now, as far as the batteries, new battery technology is coming out every day, and there's a, 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 a bunch of new ideas. Probably in 10 years, lithium batteries will be out of electric cars. But what we do is continue to say that every person on the planet should have a vehicle. You know, we should have a... That's another you know, thing. And, and I think about, you know, I was talking to my friend on the phone who lives in Southern California, and I thought, you know, we don't, 
we don't have a way to get to Medford. You know, people talk about, oh, I got to go to Medford because blah, blah, blah. You know, why not build a train? I mean, why not, why not make it so that people can get places without having everybody in their car? They already the have bus services. Oh, well, uh, a bus is not the same. It's still a hand, well, little handful of people. It would, it would it's still be, on a roadway. It's an option. I'm talking about, you know, people Wait, how, all over how many, the world how many have tunnels good are you going to d- d- drill through to get a train from the coast? Over to the valley. Well, how right. did they put the tunnel underneath the uh, channel? I mean, you know, somebody has to want to do it and it's have not, to. It's not going to pay it. for itself. That's well, the I understand that. <laughs> My point is, it's not important enough. They would rather have the freedom, pardon me, of having their own vehicle outside their door to get in and go wherever they want and park wherever they want, than say, "Hey, you know what would really be good if if we could get ourselves." If we had to move around a lot, get there without everybody having to do it in, in an individual vehicle. They're because trying the high-speed rail in California. They've been for quite some from time. From Los Angeles yeah. to Vegas uh, is the new one. Oh, okay. That one, too. That's right. I was thinking the one from, well, oh, supposedly the from the Bay Area to L.A. And personally, I mean, I, I wish it would happen. I'm like you. I, yeah. I think we do need high-speed rail. I think it's a good option. But- so far, it's really been just stop and go and nothing but trouble. Expense, money, Overruns. overrun. Uh, yeah. Okay. But the end result, I think, would be good. It's just how they get there, I guess. Well, I, it's I would, just part I would of think the equation, the, the, you know, the, of how we, yeah. how we are selfish and we want it our way and, and whatever is easy and we're willing to accept a lot of yeah. plastic in our world because it's convenient, you know? Don't, don't railroads make a lot more money from freight than they do from passengers? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's what I... Yes. But, I, I, but went again, to, it's, it's, I went to Europe about 20 years ago with a Eurail pass. At, uh, I, I understand that pass has changed quite a bit, but it was the most amazing thing you could possibly imagine. I don't remember what I paid for it. It wasn't a lot. It was like maybe $250, and I think it had an expiration date, which was pretty long. And you can jump on a train any place and go any place pretty damn quickly. Uh, I remember feeling like James Bond. We, we and would fat. get up every oh, yeah, morning right. and go to the train <laughs> station <laughs> and say, well, where can we go today? Literally. Right. And zip you there. And I came home thinking, well, gee, why don't we have a train system like this here? Because people because those countries, their cars. Uh, most of our states are bigger than those countries, yeah. for one thing. Yeah. Huge area, and it, it re- require a whole different... Yeah, it's different a different mindset. Mindset, yeah, yeah. because um, if I took a train to Chicago or out west someplace, and then I got to get around when I get there. And all. Yeah, but, and yeah, they have an amazing train system. Right. In right. this country, we have a love affair with automobiles. Yeah. That's yes, yeah. The fact no getting you're, around it. you're really not going to change that uh, appreciably no. in a short period of time. No way. Yeah. Well, we're changing in other ways, though, and I don't mean to endlessly harp on this subject, but... You know, Amazon, that kind of delivery system where you go on the computer and and a couple of clicks and somebody packs it up in a warehouse and it has to get to the warehouse somehow and then it has to get onto a truck and then it comes and gets delivered to your door. Well, it's driving the stores out of business because people now just want everything brought to them. I mean, it's it's another change in our society. and, And I think we're missing out on a lot by by doing that. I don't know. I'm I have mixed feelings, but I, but I feel like you know we're we're not going to get it back again. We're not going to get that excitement of walking into a store and saying, "Oh, let's let's go and and look." Getting look greeted by the store yeah. owner and let, knowing that they appreciate you being there, you know that kind of stuff. If they're going to close the stores, they better turn them into apartments for living or something because we have, we have another issue that. You know, like recycling people out onto the street because they don't have any place to live. So. You know, years ago when we were kids, Shirley, uh, they didn't, well, maybe, I guess they did, but they, they, they didn't have supermarkets. They had mom and pop stores. Mm-hmm. If you wanted yeah. a can of beans, you went to mom and pop sure. or the butcher store and things like that. And then eventually supermarkets appeared and you, it was cheaper, faster, and easier than mom and pop. Mm-hmm. And eventually the mom and pops are gone. You can drive, drive all over this country go through little towns where there's 15 antique stores that used to be a dress store or something like that, and so-called antique stores yeah. that, that have taken over some of those towns. 
Walmart and other places have put out of business. Not all change is good change, I think, and especially, you know, for people like me who I've, I've lived in New York City, I've lived in San Francisco, I've lived in Las Vegas. I've, I've You know, I've seen city life, I've, and here I am in this little rural community, and I know the difference, but it, it seems to me that, that you can get seduced into a lifestyle, and it feels absolutely normal because it is. You know, it's all in what you get used to. And, and um, you know, people... People are going to do what they're going to do. I don't know where I was going to go with that thought. <laughs> Take it away, somebody. <laughs> well, I'll just go back real quick. We were talking about how hard it is. Maybe it's because I'm a senior now and I, my fingers are different. I cannot open hardly any packaging anymore. It's just Scissors. You need a pair harder. of scissors. Oh, yeah. And then you get the ones with that real hard plastic, like you said. Yeah. You cut that oh. open, it's like a butcher knife, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and again, I think packages, they just overpackage yeah. everything. That's been happening I, for quite And I wonder how much of that is driven by the fact that we need more secure packaging because there are sick people out there that will do stuff to alter the product that's in the package. Yes, yeah. You know, I think of that every time I open up a can of uh, a, a jar of Tylenol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. remember uh, okay, yeah. Tylenol, Tylenol. Yeah, or, or any jar that everything is sealed now, you yeah. know, and it wasn't Even like my that. little chapsticks have a little thing. Yeah. yeah. Sealed for your protection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh. And there's some guy in there taking them all apart and doing this nasty thing and re- putting his own little seal on it. Oh, I just opened a whole can of worms there. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Look, anybody, any harder now. Why yes. do people want to do that kind of thing? That's a whole other subject. All right. Right. Maybe. We're running out of time, guys, but boy. Well, I just wanted to talk about you know, the resistance to change. Um, uh, probably more so in America than anywhere else in the world, but you know, just in mundane things like changing from albums, LPs, to cassette tapes, to CDs. You know, none of those changes were met with oh, yay, this is a new opportunity for us. No, it's just like, I'm never going to buy that. And then all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> there you are, you're buying it. <laughs> Along those lines, your new car doesn't have a CD player in it. So now you have to figure out how to convert all your CDs to thumb drives, which right. isn't necessarily easy. I was trying to tell my sister-in-law in Florida, who's in her 80s, about, she said, it doesn't have a CD player. I said, well, you have to have a thumb drive now. And I was sending her shout She had no idea where to plug that in or anything. Right. Right. That's why I went to Pandora. <laughs> yes, I pay for it. I think five bucks a month. Well, they, have a, they have a free one. You just have to listen oh, to a few Oh, no, 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 no. I did that. I couldn't take it oh. after the ads. I said, no, mm-hmm. I'm going to pay five bucks a month to get rid of the ads. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we're r- r- right down to uh, less than a minute now. So, okay. so my takeaway any... is what, waste not, want not. There you go. Okay, mine is plastics, abundant, redundant, and unnecessary. So I second go. that, and I think just um, look around and see what you can do that's something good rather than maybe a throwaway. See if you can recycle it in some other way. Yep. Learn Anyhow, about learn you. about composting. It's 100%. Ah, here we go. Repla- re- we recycling your that. banana skins and all. It's not that big a deal. Um Oh, I smoke my banana skins. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh oh, smoke. That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, run out and buy a recycling bin, and we'll see you next time when we'll have another incredibly interesting or, or subject. Ch- or check out the Lions uh, website, uh, Facebook page, and there's information how to get a hold of me, and I can pick up your recyclables. Great. Good point. <laughs> All righty. Excellent. Uh, good stuff. Hey. Thank you.